For decades, Boeing has dominated the skies with billion-dollar aircraft projects, cutting-edge jetliners, and powerful government contracts. But what happens when a self-taught African inventor introduces a plane so futuristic, so disruptive, that it could render Boeing's empire obsolete? This is the story of Maxwell's Kombutso's self-powered aircraft, a machine that doesn't just compete with Boeing's jets, it threatens to change aviation forever. The unveiling. In a private hangar in Africa, engineers, journalists, and foreign delegates gather, uncertain of what they're about to witness. Maxwell steps forward, calm but determined. Behind him sits his invention, a sleek, futuristic plane unlike anything the world has seen. Its surface gleams under the lights. It's designed more reminiscent of a spacecraft than a conventional jet. The claim? This aircraft requires no jet fuel, no traditional engines, and no costly refueling infrastructure. It is powered by a self-sustaining energy system, an idea once dismissed as impossible. Skeptics whisper, cameras flash, and the world waits. The first flight, with a quiet hum, the aircraft powers up. There is no roar of jet engines, no trail of exhaust. Instead, it glides forward, lifting effortlessly into the air. Observers gasp as the plane ascends smoothly, circling the skies with uncanny silence. For hours, it flies without landing, without fuel, without explanation. Engineers from rival companies scribble furiously, try and understand what they are seeing. Pilots shake their heads in disbelief. When the plane finally touches down, the audience erupts in applause. The impossible has just been made real. Boeing's response. Back in Seattle, Boeing executives hold emergency meetings. The company has invested billions in next-generation fuel-efficient aircraft, hybrid propulsion systems, and even experimental hydrogen planes. But Maxwell's technology threatens to leapfrog them all. If a self-powered plane becomes viable at scale, Boeing's massive investments and the infrastructure around them could collapse overnight. Airlines wouldn't need fuel. Airports wouldn't need refueling hubs. Governments wouldn't need to secure oil routes. For Boeing, this is more than competition. It's an existential threat. The secret deal. Whispers begin to surface. Boeing may already be aware of Maxwell's technology. Leaked reports suggest that years ago, representatives approached him quietly, offering to buy out his patents, rumored to be in the hundreds of millions. But Maxwell refused. Now, with the world watching his plane soar, Boeing's secret is exposed. Their billion-dollar projects are suddenly vulnerable to an African innovation that costs a fraction to produce and promises a future they cannot control. The military interest. The demonstration doesn't just attract airlines and investors. It captures the attention of global military powers. A plane that never needs fuel, never depends on vulnerable supply chains, and can remain airborne for days at a time? For defense strategists, this is a game-changing weapon. Rumors swirl that U.S. defense contractors are pressuring Boeing to take control of the technology. Chinese officials, already impressed by Maxwell's earlier inventions, begin sending discreet offers. Even Russia is rumored to have sent envoys, hoping to study the aircraft firsthand. Maxwell suddenly finds himself at the center of a global power struggle, the African pride. Meanwhile, across Africa, the news spreads like wildfire. Headlines read, Africa leads a future of aviation. Crowds celebrate in the streets, chanting Maxwell's name. For too long, the continent has been painted as a consumer of foreign technology, not a producer of world-shaking innovation. But now, a son of Africa has built a machine that rivals the greatest aerospace companies on Earth. Universities announce new aerospace research programs. Young inventors flood labs and workshops, inspired by what they've seen. For the first time, the dream of Africa as a technological leader feels real. Boeing's dilemma. Inside Boeing's boardrooms, panic deepens. Some executives argue the company must partner with Maxwell, even if it means swallowing pride and sharing control. Others insist they must undermine him before his technology destroys their billion-dollar projects. Documents leaked suggesting Boeing may lobby governments to question the safety and legality of Maxwell's invention. Rumors surface of backdoor attempts to sabotage his operations. To Boeing, Maxwell isn't just an inventor. He's a ticking time bomb threatening to blow apart decades of dominance. Maxwell's choice. Amid the chaos, 
Maxwell faces a dilemma of his own. Should he sell his technology to the highest bidder, securing financial power but risking corporate control? Should he guard it fiercely for Africa, ensuring the continent reaps the benefits? Or should he take the radical step of releasing elements of it openly, ensuring no one, Boeing, China, or any government, can bury it? Each choice comes with enormous consequences. And with Boeing's shadow looming larger by the day, time is running out. The global summit. Then comes the announcement that shocks the world. A global aviation summit will be held in Geneva, with Maxwell invited as a keynote presenter. Boeing, Airbus, China's aviation giants, and military representatives from across the globe confirm attendance. The summit promises to decide the future of aviation itself. As Maxwell boards a self-powered plane to fly toward the event, the world watches. Will Boeing crush his dream, or will his invention mark the dawn of a new age in flight? Arrival in Geneva. The skies over Switzerland darken as Maxwell's self-powered plane glides into Geneva. Unlike the roaring jets that descend nearby, his craft lands in near silence, drawing stunned stares from onlookers at the airport. Inside the summit halls, tension is thick. Boeing executives huddle with government officials. Chinese representatives arrive with a polished confidence. Defense contractors and airline CEOs whisper behind closed doors, their eyes fixed on the one man who has shifted the balance of power, Maxwell Chikumbutso. The keynote, when Maxwell takes the stage, the room falls silent. Behind him, images of his aircraft fill massive screens. Its smooth flight, its unbroken endurance, its unmatched efficiency. He speaks calmly but firmly. Aviation has always been chained to fuel. Today we break those chains. This is not about corporations or governments. This is about humanity's freedom to fly without limits. The audience bursts into applause. But in the shadows, not everyone is celebrating. Boeing strikes back. Minutes after his keynote, Boeing's lead representative steps forward. With a sharp tone, he questions Maxwell's claims. Extraordinary technologies demand extraordinary proof. Without transparency, how can the world trust this invention? Whispers ripple across the hall. Is Boeing calling him a fraud? Or are they preparing to demand access to his core technology? Maxwell doesn't flinch. What you've seen is proof enough. Trust will come from results, not corporate control. The clash between the lone inventor and the aerospace giant is now on full display. The behind-the-scenes deals. While debates rage on the main floor in private rooms, secret negotiations unfold. China's delegation reportedly offers Africa billions in exchange for co-developing the technology. European airline CEOs press Maxwell to license his design, promising global adoption. Meanwhile, Boeing, backed by military advisors, floats a veiled threat. Either cooperate or face regulatory blockades that could ground his planes permanently. The future of aviation is no longer about engineering. It's about politics, money, and survival. The unexpected ally. Then, something unexpected happens. Representatives from smaller nations, countries long sidelined by the aerospace giants, begin to rally around Maxwell. They argue that his invention should not fall into the hands of a single superpower or corporation. A coalition begins to form, one that sees Maxwell's aircraft not as a commodity, but as a chance for global quality in aviation. For the first time, Boeing realizes its dominance is not only threatened by technology, but by a shifting global order, a chilling discovery. But as the summit continues, Maxwell receives a chilling message from his team back home. Surveillance drones have been spotted near his private hangar. Unknown operatives try to access his prototypes. It's clear now, someone is not waiting for negotiations. They are trying to steal his technology by force. The summit may be the center stage, but the real battle is happening behind the curtain. The hangar breach. Back in Zimbabwe, the quiet hum of the night is broken. Maxwell's private hangar, where his earliest prototypes and sensitive blueprints are stored, falls under siege. Security cameras capture shadowy figures scaling the perimeter, carrying equipment designed for electronic lockpicking. But what they don't expect is Maxwell's foresight. The hangar is protected by layers of counter-surveillance tech, infrared traps, biometric locks, and drone sentinels. Within minutes, alarms blare, sending the intruders scrambling. 
Still, the attempt makes one thing terrifyingly clear. His technology is now a target worth stealing at any cost. The hidden documents. The next morning, Maxwell meets privately with his closest allies. From a hidden vault, he retrieves sealed documents. These papers contain his patent drafts, research notes, and coded schematics, evidence of his invention's authenticity, but also the very blueprints that world powers are desperate to get their hands on. Maxwell reveals something shocking. I never uploaded these designs to any cloud. If I disappear, the world may never see this technology again. His allies exchange worried glances. The line between protecting innovation and risking it to razor has never been so thin. The double game. At the Geneva summit, whispers intensify. Word spreads about the hangar breach, though no official source confirms it. Behind closed doors, diplomats start playing a dangerous double game. China quietly proposes a joint African-Chinese aerospace hub, offering cutting-edge infrastructure in exchange for partial rights. Meanwhile, Bowen begins lobbying Western regulators to question the plane's safety and legality, a tactic designed to slow Maxwell down. And then, unexpectedly, a European Union representative leans in with a softer offer. We don't want your patents, Mr. Chikambutso. We want an alliance, one where Africa leads and we support. The room falls silent. For the first time, the tables may be turning. The test that shakes the summit. Just as debates reach their peak, Maxwell makes a bold move. He announces an unscheduled live demonstration. From a runway outside Geneva, his self-powered plane lifts off into the skies, this time carrying independent inspectors from multiple nations. The flight is broadcast live across the summer hall. Hour after hour, the plane soars without fuel, without emissions, defying every law of conventional aviation. The audience sits frozen. Airline CEOs drop their pens. Boeing executives whisper urgently into phones. Chinese delegates exchange quick notes. The proof is undeniable. The world can no longer dismiss him. The storm begins. But as the aircraft glides above Geneva, Maxwell notices something chilling. On his instruments, interference spikes, a sign of signal jamming. Somebody doesn't want this demonstration to succeed. From the ground, security teams scramble as suspicious vans circle near the runway, emitting powerful electronic waves. The live feed flickers, threatening to cut off. Maxwell grips the controls tighter. The world is watching, and the storm is only just beginning. The legacy takes flight. As the signal jamming intensifies, Maxwell steadies his grip. With calm precision, he switches his systems to an encrypted offline mode, a backup he had engineered for just such a sabotage attempt. The plane stabilizes, and the live broadcast flickers back to life. The audience erupts in gas of relief as the aircraft, soaring above Geneva, continues its flight uninterrupted. The saboteurs on the ground are quickly apprehended by Swiss security forces, revealing ties to corporate espionage networks linked to global aerospace giants. In that moment, the truth becomes undeniable. No longer rumor, no longer theory, Africa's self-powered aviation technology is real. The summit's atmosphere shifts. Nations that once laughed or conspired now step forward, offering alliances and investments. Boeing's executives, red-faced and shaken, quietly leave the hall. China recalibrates its strategy, realizing it cannot control what has already been unleashed. And Maxwell? He doesn't celebrate. He simply lands his plane, opens a cockpit, and looks straight into the cameras. This technology was never meant to be owned by one man, one company, or one country. It belongs to the future, and the future belongs to all of us. The crowd roars. History has been rewritten, not by a trillion-dollar corporation, not by a superpower, but by an inventor from Africa who dared to dream. From that day forward, aviation would never be the same. The age of fuel, pollution, and dependence was giving way to a new chapter, an era born not in Silicon Valley, not in Beijing, but in the heart of Africa. And as the self-powered plane touched down, the world finally understood Maxwell Chikambutso hadn't just built an aircraft, he had built a legacy.